This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about a ban on Bitcoin mining in the U.S. Are we anywhere close to something like this happening, and what would happen to Bitcoin mining and the U.S. if a ban like this were instituted? There have been some rumblings of this, especially in the news since earlier this summer when the New York legislature passed a bill that was cracking down on Bitcoin mining, basically saying you can't mine Bitcoin with carbon-based fuel sources and doing something like a two-year moratorium on new Bitcoin mining approvals. The governor has been a little bit non-committal on whether she's going to enforce this or not. She's probably just waiting to see which, which way the political winds are blowing. But the good thing about the U.S. system is we have different states. So for example, if Bitcoin mining were to be completely eliminated in New York state, it would move to other states. And there's nothing that the crazy people the crazy people who rule New York, I should say, could do about it. New York has already shot itself in the foot with the New York bit license thing, which has basically ensured that all the entrepreneurs who are operating in crypto are not active in New York State. But it's made it very difficult for residents of New York State to access some of these services. In many cases, these crypto services are garbage anyway, so it may be a bit of a mixed blessing. But I think I've thought of another way of approaching this. So obviously we have the flexibility in the US. If one state doesn't like something, another state could allow it to take home there. But let's look at what would happen if it was banned everywhere in the US in sort of a hypothetical situation. So as part of this thought experiment, we're going to try to imagine one of the most evil and authoritarian states in the world. This is a government that tracks everything that you do on the internet. You can't even open up a bank account or see a doctor in this country without giving up all your personal information. They encourage big tech companies to deplatform you and they encourage your employer to possibly fire you because you have the incorrect views on Mexican beer and other controversial topics. This same government uses lots of high tech to track your real life movements. They have social credit scores. Of course, this could be the US to a certain extent, but I'm also talking about China and there have been a lot of good memes about this in terms of the social credit score and uh, not saying that a certain country is or is not part of China. But one of the things about China and the CCP, the Communist Party, Chinese Communist Party there, the country itself has what's called a closed capital account. So they're very concerned about capital outflows. They want to keep you, Chinese residents, and your money locked inside of the country. They especially don't want, want capital flight by billionaires and large amounts of money leaving the system. So one of the things they did last summer in an attempt to seal off all of the exits is they basically banned Bitcoin. And in particular, they banned Bitcoin mining, which is why I'm using China as part of this thought experiment. So as we've said many times, Bitcoin is freedom money. This is why the US should adopt Bitcoin. Bitcoin is really in alignment with the Founding Fathers' ideals, and it's the complete antithesis of the Chinese Communist Party's ideals. So it, it was partially an ideological move, and it was partially a practical move to stop these capital outflows out of China. So in the summer of 2021, as we said, the CCP banned not just Bitcoin usage and being able to buy Bitcoin, but also Bitcoin mining. And so what happened last summer, we saw this huge crash in the hash rate of Bitcoin as all of the Bitcoin mining machines, the ASICs inside of China, unplugged and moved elsewhere. But something amazing has happened over the past year, and I've been meaning to cover this based on this story from a couple weeks ago. Basically, even in spite of this ban on Bitcoin mining, China is still the second, the number two top Bitcoin mining hub in the world. And we're not just talking about Chinese mining pools where you just have a node that all the transactions or all the hashes is, is going through and people are sharing the hash power and sharing the rewards, the Bitcoin mining rewards. But in terms of actual machines, if I've read this correctly, China still hosts 21% of the total global Bitcoin hash rate. And the way we know this is because there was a company that basically surveyed all of the mining pools that operate uh, have have ASICs that are operating in China or have Bitcoin miners who are participating in those mining pools. This was the Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance. And even a year after, the, after China banned Bitcoin mining, 21% of the hash is still present 
in China if these numbers are true. Now, this is really incredible if you think about it, because this is one of the most authoritarian, powerful governments in the world that has the ability to lock people in their apartment buildings for weeks or months on end. And yet, for some reason, even after banning Bitcoin mining, it's still going on in the country. And we have to ask ourselves, how is this happening? And we're not we can't be totally sure. Obviously, if some of you are on the ground in China and you have some information, feel free, feel free to report it in the comments below. But it appears to be that there there's certainly some Bitcoin mining machines, some miners and ASICs who are flouting the ban. And this is a very serious thing to do because if they get caught and someone wants to turn them in or get them in trouble, they really are risking life in prison in China or execution or some sort of harsh torture. So it's possible that people are doing this just because Bitcoin is so valuable and it's a it's a good way of making money. But it might actually be that it's the Chinese government itself and Chinese communist officials that have taken over these machines and are mining Bitcoin. This is quite possible. So either you have people who are flouting the laws in this highly authoritarian state or you have the government itself that is mining Bitcoin. Either way, we do know that there's a lot of Bitcoin mining going on in China. I think it's only second to the US at this point. And again, we're talking about actual Bitcoin mining machines, the actual computers, the ASICs, not just mining pools. And this is happening in a country that, as we said, is highly authoritarian. This is a country that already has a CBDC, a central bank digital currency. They're interested in locking people down, not just in a physical prison, but in the digital prison in terms of internet usage and in a money prison in terms of trying to force them to use CBDCs. This is a country that has a very good reason to hate Bitcoin because the ideology goes completely against Bitcoin. They're trying to keep people in their country. They're trying to keep capital in their country. They have a nationwide ban on Bitcoin mining, and yet this country is still the number two largest Bitcoin mining company country. I'm sorry, in the world. I'll, I'll link to this article below if you want to learn more about China and their central bank digital currency. But I think this is important when we're considering a U.S. ban, uh, and this is a highly theoretical thing. For example, New York can ban Bitcoin mining or carbon uh, fossil fuel Bitcoin mining, uh, but Texas certainly won't go along with that. Wyoming will not go along with it. But let's say that, that, the, that the system sort of changed and the entire U.S., the federal government and the state governments turned against Bitcoin mining there's still a very, very good chance that a ton of Bitcoin mining would be going on just as it is in China. And if China can't stop Bitcoin mining just because the incentives are too strong, neither can the US. And we certainly don't have quite the totalitarian system, at least not yet in the US. But even if we were to develop more toward, along those lines toward a strict authoritarianism, it appears that even under a system like the one run by the CCP, there is still a lot of Bitcoin mining going on. And again, it could be Chinese Communist Party officials doing the mining for themselves and for their families, or maybe doing it for the federal government. So having heard these facts, I have to ask you if you're still worried about a US Bitcoin mining ban. What happens if it's banned and the federal government starts uh, starts Bitcoin mining in the U.S.? It's basically being mined out of Washington, D.C. or under the control of the federal government. What we'd have in this situation is we would have Uncle Sam, we would have the federal government basically burning electricity, securing the Bitcoin network for us. And that's something that I'm totally fine with because the Bitcoin miners do not have control over the system. They do not have control over the protocol, unlike in proof of stake, where having more coins gives you more control over the system. Having more coins in Bitcoin does not give you any more control over the protocol. Being a Bitcoin miner does not give you any more control over the protocol. You're basically a worker, you're a factory that cranks out the blocks, that does the hashes and tries to guess the magic number. And if you try to do some sort of funny business or break the consensus rules, the full nodes will reject your transactions and reject the block that you've just mined, and you will have wasted all of this electricity. So if China cannot ban Bitcoin mining, it's highly, highly unlikely that the US is going to be able to ban it. And to be clear, there's no Bitcoin mining ban in the works in the US. You have a couple of backwards places like New York State, where they're contemplating a limited version from this. But even if this were eventually to happen at a nationwide level, you're going to see even more Bitcoin mining happening in the US just because we have these all these diverse power sources, etc. And so even if it were banned, we can imagine that it would continue 
uh, going on just as it is in communist China. Final note, which I've already covered, Bitcoin miners have no control over the protocol. They do the industrial grunt work. If they try to cheat or create a bad block, the Bitcoin nodes will ignore the block and the miner will have burned all of that electricity in vain. This is what's beautiful about proof of work. And this is what makes it resistant to nation state level attacks, unlike proof of stake, which is very easy to become a captured or controlled protocol. Proof of work, and this is why the China example is so special, proof of work actually incentivizes hostile governments to do work for Bitcoin. So we have the CCP really hates Bitcoin, and yet it's quite likely that either they, the party minions, or other people in China are actually doing their best to help secure the Bitcoin network by running Bitcoin miners. This is Bitcoin. It is a highly robust, highly anti-fragile system that can resist. And the honey badger doesn't care what China does, doesn't care what New York does, it doesn't care what the US federal government does. The way the incentives work, people will keep mining Bitcoin no matter what the government tells them to do. And so the chance of a Bitcoin mining ban that is effective in the US is basically zero in the same way that a marijuana ban over the past 80 years had very, very little effect. It put a lot of innocent people in jail for no reason whatsoever, but it certainly did not wipe out the crop. And eventually these things come back. Cannabis is being legalized all over the country and eventually, eventually will be legalized at the at the uh, at the federal level. And Bitcoin's the same way. If the people want something because it's a better product, because it's a stronger form of money, they will eventually get it and win in spite of their government. And this is one reason that Bitcoin will continue to win. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.